This Google Apps Updates episode is very special as it includes some exciting new features in nine different apps. So make sure your Google Apps are up to date and let me show you what's new. The first app we have in the list is Google Photos and it got a lot of new features. The first one is the redesigned Memories Carousel. You'll notice here that the items have more curved corners plus the animation looks much better when you start scrolling. You'll see here that the content and the container move in different speeds giving this really nice animation when you scroll through your memories which matches the Material 3 design language. The second new change is the auto enhance feature in the video editor similar to the one we have for photos. So let me open this video and then tap on the edit button and you will immediately see the auto enhance option next to the speaker. Tapping on it will immediately adjust the colors and the effects to give you better results. And here's a quick comparison before and after the auto enhance. And the other big news I have is the availability of Magic Editor of the Pixel 8 to all Google Photos users. That includes the older Pixel models, other Android devices, and the iOS devices. But there are some important restrictions based on the device maker model. If you own a Pixel, you will get unlimited edits. But for other Android and the iOS devices, you will only get 10 edits per month completely free of charge. And if you want unlimited edits, you have to get the 2TB Google One plan. Thankfully, the feature is now available on my Pixel 7 Pro to show you how it works on older Pixel models. And here I have one of the photos. You need to make sure that your photo is backed up to your Google account to be able to use the feature, which I already did. And then you tap on the Magic Editor button. It will show you the same exact editor you get with the Pixel 8 models. I will do a side-by-side -side comparison between the 7 Pro and the 8 Pro running the same feature to see if there is any difference in the speed and the quality, so stay tuned for this one. But now let me show you one more change related to the Magic Editor. You will notice here when I select anything in the photo, the plus and minus buttons that we used to have at the bottom right corner are now gone and we have this new adjust selection option. Tapping on it will take you to another page with the plus and minus buttons, but they have a different design, they have a different icon and also a text to be more descriptive which will make it slightly easier for new users to deal with the feature. And when you tap on done, you will also see a much wider erase button. So that's it when it comes to the magic editor. And now let's move on to the other features. And this is the first time to see Google Photos automatically creating panorama photos for me. And this is the first time to come across this type of creations. So please let me know in the comments if you think the same. Plus now we have those two quick action buttons to immediately save or share the creation. Last but not least, when you go to the search tab, you will notice some differences in this area. And here is a side by side comparison with the previous version. You will notice here that now we have two headers, your activity and categories, and instead of only categories like before, plus we got this new option, which is called recently added that you won't find in the previous version. On top of this, most of the categories that we used to have in this area are now gone. And all we have now is screenshots and videos. Moving to the phone app and it got a very silly feature called audio emoji. So let me make a quick call to show you how it works. So once the call starts, you will see this audio emoji button showing at the bottom. Tapping on it will show you six different emojis. And here is what happens when you tap on any of them. The feature simply does two things. It will play a sound effect based on the emoji you chose and it will show you fancy animations on the screen similar to the ones we get in Google Messages. But when I tried this feature with people, they either freaked out or they completely ignored what's going on and continued with the call. So I'm not sure why a feature like this could be fun or helpful. But anyways, here we have it. Google Messages only got one small change. When you go to settings and then suggestions, you will no longer see the not just toggle. And as per the description, this one used to give reply and birthday reminders, which is no longer the case. In Google Maps, you will see two new big design changes. The first one is the simplified navigation bar with three taps only instead of five like before. 
The Go tab is completely gone, which used to be a place for pinning some places to quickly navigate to them, which is no longer the case in the new design. The updates and saved tabs are now called You, and from here you can access your saved list same as before, but you will no longer see the search bar at the top. And when it comes to updates, which includes following notifications and messages, you can access the notifications at the top right corner, same as messages, but I couldn't find any way to access the following tab in the new design. When it comes to contribute, it's exactly the same one as before, and the same applies to the Explore. The second change you will see when you start your navigation journey. So for example, when I tap on this place, you will see that there is a floating card at the bottom of the screen with a handle, so you can swipe up and down to expand or collapse. The animation is much smoother than before and looks modern. You have the share and the X buttons at the top right corner for quick actions. But when you tap on directions, that's when things become even better. Now you have all the navigation options right under your fingertip even when you are using the phone with one hand because it's now at the bottom of the screen so you can easily scroll between things not only this but you have this filters button next to the x that will allow you to access the route options directly from here without the need to stretch your finger all the way up to do the same actions additionally the two search bars at the top are no longer filling the entire width and they look like a floating card which looks nicer as well Moving to Gemini, the new 1.5 Pro version that Google announced in the I.O. event is now available in 150 countries. And if you want to upgrade, you can go to the profile menu, then tap on upgrade to Gemini Advanced. It requires a 2TB Google One subscription to be able to get access, which costs $20 a month. But the good news is you can get two months for free to try the feature and cancel it anytime if you want. To know more about the new features included in this version, you can go to updates and it will show you everything you need to know, like the new 1 million tokens. You can upload your own documents, summarize them, ask questions, and many more. So it requires a separate video to go through all the new features, which I might do in the future. Moving to Google Chrome, the password manager got a complete revamp to match the Material U design language with a much bigger search bar at the top. The add password button looks much better as well. Then you have the list of passwords and the redesigned navigation bar at the bar. Currently, it doesn't support the wallpaper colors, but it defaults to the blue color of Material U. So hopefully we will see it supporting this in the future. And let's go through the pages to see how they look. This is how the password checkup page looks like. And when you go to settings, you will see the bigger toggles of Material U over here. Now let's talk about the Gmail app. The first change, when you open any message, you will see this chat-like text box at the bottom of the screen, which will give you all the options you might need. And when you compare this to the previous version, all we have is the reply, reply all forward and the emoji button. But now you can do more things. For example, when you tap on this attach button, it will take you immediately to the files app to attach something and then start typing your message. The second button will allow you to reply forward or change the recipients. And when you tap on change recipients, it will immediately put the cursor inside the address bar. Then we have the forward button and finally the emoji. Plus you have the ability to immediately type your reply over here. And as you see, it will give you an inline experience so you can finish your message and tap on send right away as if you are chatting in a messaging app. The help me write feature also got a couple of new changes. The first one, once you put the cursor inside the body of the email, you will get this new swipe shortcut to activate the feature. Plus now you can use the microphone inside the a text window and the tapping on it will give you this new material you design that animates while you are speaking. Now let's talk about YouTube Music and the first change I noticed is the different inertia while scrolling in the carousels on your home feed. So for example when I keep scrolling as you see it shows only one item at a time but when I scroll in the other direction it moves faster. So it seems like 
it holds the scrolling down until it finishes loading and then it can scroll smoothly as normal. The second change is in iOS and now you can see the same gradient background color in the now playing screen, same as Android. And the last thing I'm gonna talk about in this video is Android Auto and we got one new option under settings. When you scroll down a bit under display, you will see this new toggle that says use your phone's wallpaper in Android Auto. And when you turn on the switch, when you go to the menus, you will see your phone's wallpaper on the screen. But for some reason, it doesn't work on this unit, but it works on the other one I have in my car. When you turn on the switch and then go to the apps menu, you will immediately see your phone's wallpaper over here. So that's pretty much it for today. Those are all the new changes I wanted to show you in Google Apps. And if you spotted any new feature, please let me know in the comments or reach me out on social media to include in my future episodes. But for now, thanks so much for watching and see you in the next video.